Hello, and uh, a very warm welcome to part two, where I produce a printed board. I intended it to accommodate nothing other than the reservoir and uh, smoothing electrolytic capacitors, but in the interests of making a few minor circuit layout improvements, I'm uh, not an electronics design engineer. <laughs> I later decided to add the EL41 cathode resistor and um, bypass electrolytic capacitor, as well as adding a 680K biasing resistor onto the board for reasons that will become clear later in this uh, episode. Before wiring and uh, securing the printed board onto uh, the chassis, I will check the values of the rest of the resistors and uh, capacitors valued over one manifold and uh, replace where necessary. I'll also replace decayed rubber sheathed wires. Enjoy viewing as I proceed. <laughs> During the past 10 minutes or so I've been checking with my digital AVO meter DC resistance on the primary and secondary of the uh, mains transformer. It would seem it is good to go. The primary and secondary of both IFT transformers they too seem Good to go. And the uh, audio output transformer and speaker. And they also seem good to go. <laughs> so, as far as they are all concerned, it should be all systems go. <laughs> Before doing the continuity tests, I measured and cut a square of copper clad Pexlin board. Once I've plotted out the print and etched it in ferric chloride solution, 0.8 millimetre holes will be drilled into the appropriate locations and two 33 microfarad electrolytic capacitors will be soldered in place onto it. That printer circuit board will be located here directly above the old existing dual electrolytic capacitor canister. That will be achieved by using these two metal standoffs. It will become clearer once I begin doing that uh, particular task. Now I'll uh, snip a few wires. By doing that it has disconnected this dual electrolytic capacitor from this uh, radio's power supply circuit. Next on the agenda is to uh, use my 4BA box spanner to uh, unbolt this aluminium canister from this uh, chassis. Right, let that uh, canister drop and now I will uh, measure for the holes to be cut in the uh, circuit board.
I've uh, marked where the two securing holes are to be located. Now I'll lightly centre punch this board and drill the holes so they accommodate for BA screws. Before I do a trial positioning of that board, I'll check the strength of this uh, 680k resistor. I expect there to be adequate clearance between the board and uh, that resistor. This uh, 680k resistor is given a value reading of uh, 870k, which is uh, 190k above 680k. 20% of uh, 680k is 136k, so 136 from 190 is 54. Therefore, it is 54k beyond the outer tolerance limit of uh, 20%, or 680 plus 136, which is uh, 716k. The um, shiny new replacement resistor gives a value reading of uh, 676k. I can uh, live with that better than I can live with uh, 870k. Whilst I was uh, in the process of replacing the uh, 680k resistor, I also replaced this uh, 2.2 nanofarad capacitor. It made sense, as you can see, one of the um, wires came out of the end whilst I was in the process of removing it from this uh, tech board. Now that task is out of the way, I'll do a trial fitting of the copper clad Paxlin board I've been making up. This copper clad Paxlin board fits into place beautifully. See, I can pick up the radio chassis by holding on to it. Now I'll plot where the components are to be located onto this board, so I'll return once that task is uh, complete. This piece of uh, copper clad board taken back off uh, this chassis, I will now go on to conjure up some type of printed outlay onto which these three electrolytic capacitors and uh, two resistors might easily be uh, accommodated. Plotting out and drawing the print onto this copper clad board was straightforward once I knew the position of all five components. Next I'll etch this board by submerging it into ferric chloride solution. Hopefully it will not take too long to uh, complete. It's uh, rough and ready but if I've plotted out where each component is located correctly, there's no reason why it shouldn't work as uh, intended. It's now time for drilling and uh, populating. Back once all of that is uh, complete. I don't know about rough and ready. It's certainly as rough as a bear's butt. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm confident this arrangement will work just fine. The uh, cathode resistor is set at about 2mm off the surface of this board. I want plenty of air to circulate around it since it will get warm. Also, I uh, positioned each component so there is lots of room. I don't want them getting too cosy 
and um, warming each other up. <laughs> I also want them to be easily accessed should the need arise. Since there is uh, a generous 20 millimeter between the chassis and underside of this printed board I uh, looped the component wires as I put them through the holes to form eyelets. I've threaded the connecting wires through those eyelets. Not only that, each eyelet ensures a strong soldered joint. Some of you might be thinking to yourselves, why has the uh, 680K resistor been added to the component count? I didn't like it hanging in beneath this printed board. It's far more secure positioned where it is. Likewise, um, fixing the audio output valve cathode resistor and bypass capacitor to this board makes a far stronger, neater job. I've also clear lacquered the exposed copper to prevent it from uh, oxidising. Now, off camera, I'll fix the old electrolytic capacitor back onto the uh, radio chassis. That will then be um, followed by installing this uh, printed board. Before I fit the printed board to this chassis, I decided to tidy up the old dual electrolytic capacitor. It's no more or less shiny than when it left the factory. I'm only refitting it for nothing other than uh, an aesthetic purpose. Since I'm not overly enthusiastic about where this uh, 1.5k power Pi filter resistor is positioned, being directly beneath the uh, circuitry pertaining to the EL41, that being the uh, audio output pentode, both this resistor and uh, that valve naturally generate a fair amount of heat. So I'll relocate this resistor so that it is pretty much between the EL41 and EZ40 valve bases. See here the heat generated by this resistor has blackened its uh, wire insulation covering its leads. Whilst I am relocating as well as replacing, it makes good sense for me to replace the old rubber insulated wires that connect from the HT supply and the EL41 anode to the audio output transformer. When I've completed that wee task, I'll also replace the old wax coated uh, 10 nanofarad capacitor. I very much want to fit the printed board I have knocked up. I'm hoping it will be sometime between the next hour and uh, this coming Christmas. As you can see, these old rubber sheath connecting wires are in a deteriorating um, condition. They have been replaced with these newer shinier wires and uh, the speaker has been given a quick tidying up. Whilst I was doing all of that I also replaced a 10 nanofarad top cut capacitor along with a uh, 47 nanofarad tone capacitor that is connected in series with this 47k lin potentiometer which I went on to clean and uh, lubricate. See also the uh, pi filter resistor 
is now secure in its new position. Not that it has been uh, moved far. My next wee task is to check the tolerance of the uh, 330k and uh, 47k resistors. If they both measure within plus or minus 20% of their respective colour banding, I'll give them a good clean. If not, I will replace them. After doing that, I'll move over to this uh, tag board. Then I'll replace the two 47 nanofarad capacitors and check the strength of the uh, three resistors. Later on in this restoration series I'll uh, summarise the operation of this radio via its circuit diagram which will include the location and workings of the components. Those two resistors now checked the uh, 47k according to my AVO multimeter measured 48.9k and the uh, 330k measured uh, 461k which by anyone's reckoning is way beyond plus 20% tolerance. So I retain the uh, 47k and uh, I replace the 330k. Now I will crack on with checking and replacing components on this uh, tag board. Well, having checked the strength of this uh, 47k grid one stopper resistor, it incidentally gave a measurement of uh, 48.9k. Messrs Bush Limited might well have bought in a cooking good bunch of 47k half watt 20% tolerance carbon resistors on that occasion. <laughs> I went on to replace the two 47 nanofarad wax coated capacitors. One of the uh, poor old blighters uh, lost one of its legs during uh, the desoldering process. Having said that, TCC, Telephone Cable Company I think it was, manufactured very good capacitors back in the day. Being uh, paper and foil, they deteriorate to the extent they become electrically leaky. That is why I give waxes the uh, boot. <laughs> As for the three resistors on this uh, tag board, since the first two gave value readings way beyond their respective tolerance bandings, I uh, decided to quit checking tolerance readings at that point, and uh, I replaced all three of them. The 20 meg resistor, I don't know whether you can see it, but it's situated just there. Much to my surprise, gave a value reading of uh, 22.8 meg. That is good enough for me, so I've uh, left it in situ. Again off camera, I'll uh, go on to replace the final two wax capacitors on this chassis, as well as check the strength of uh, these four resistors. That's that task out of the way. The two capacitors and uh, four resistors checked and replacements fitted where required. Now I'll uh, refit the old dual electrolytic capacitor canister along with the uh, printed board I knocked up. At long last this printed board is now secure on this chassis. 
each one of its uh, connection wires are soldered onto their correct tags. And now I've uh, reinstalled the old dual electrolytic capacitor canister. Normally I assign worn out components to the uh, dustbin. It is quite possible someone in the future might decide to replace its contents with two new electrolytic capacitors. One thing for sure, these two new electrolytic capacitors will not last forever. For sure, those two new electrolytic capacitors along with the rest of the capacitors inside this radio will definitely not last forever. Since it is approaching 20 past 2 in the morning and the uh, temperature has uh, plummeted some, it is time for me to snuggle into a cosy warm bed. I invite you to join me for part 3 where, if my session content continues as planned, will be the penultimate episode in this Bush model AC31 restoration series. Thank you for viewing. Your time and interest is uh, very much appreciated. Bye for now.